homesteading here and today's the day the day I'm going to uh, empty out this last woodshed I'm going to throw it up on the deck so I don't have to walk through the snow every time to get wood uh, and then it'll be open so I can uh, fill it back up so let's go I find a lot of people um, they go into homesteading thinking that you're going to make a ton of money but really it's easier it's way easier to save money than make it what I mean by that is if I cut my own wood I can save like $2,500 a year um, on your heating cost but it takes quite a bit of work just to make $2,500 so it's not a big money maker and you gotta find something on the homestead that you can make money with got to be able to do other things too so so it's really really important not to spend more money than you can possibly save and not to spend more money than you can make back in a reasonable amount of time because people go out and they buy an $800 chainsaw a $25,000 um, tractor and a whole bunch of other stuff and then they don't make very much money and you have to pay for that stuff and then you end up working more so you can't even enjoy the stuff you have so it's really important just to do things simple like I have an old tractor I can afford it uh, my chainsaws are all old and I, I fix them up so that helps me so I run pretty good chainsaws but they didn't cost me very much So it's that way you live in your means, try to save as much money as you can, and then a little bit extra that you make, you've made it. You didn't have to pay for tractor payments and stuff. And, and you know, sometimes it's just not feasible. Like, if you have to go have a huge mortgage to pay for the property um, to homestead and your mortgage to the hilt, it probably would have been better to like a half acre homestead and uh, grow more of your vegetables and, and do that kind of stuff and have a few chickens or something um, instead of being mortgaged to the hilt. Uh, you got to make sure it is all great to have stuff. But make sure it's something that you can afford. It's really important that it's stuff that you can afford because it's no fun getting into something, think you're going to make tons of money, and then you have to pay it back. I have a Massey 50 truck. It's really old. And but it's something I can afford. I don't, I'm not, I don't stay awake at night wondering how I'm going to pay for the thing. So, buying stuff used, living in your means, is part of this homesteading. doesn't mean you don't spend money. If I can afford to buy you a Kubota tractor or a Mahindra or a Coyote or something like that, um, I don't begrudge anyone from buying one. Because I probably would. But if you can't afford it, you shouldn't buy it. So live in your means. I cut my own firewood. I do maple syrup. The bee thing has really turned into a starting of a business. But I try to do it as simple as possible. But it still costs quite a bit of money. Um, but you got to make sure that you don't let it get out of hand. Even with the bee thing, I um, built all the frames, all the equipment myself. 
I used as much scrap wood as I could, and it still cost quite a bit of money. In about two years, I made about $12,000 worth of bee equipment. I technically did not calculate it, but I don't think in those two years, I pretty well know for sure I did not spend over $5,000. It's probably way less than that for that, um, for the equipment. So I made $12,000 with equipment that only cost me less than five. Probably way less, but just say five to be safe. Um, it still costs money. But hopefully this year I'm up to 50 hives. Hopefully this uh, year coming, Lord willing, that um, that is a good winter and I, a lot of bees make the winter. And I'll have closer to 50 hives that will make honey and then I start getting a bit of my money back. I've been spending, I've been spending like crazy. For me anyways, I try not to spend too, too much, but like now I'm starting to sell some honey, so I'm seeing some money back. Um, but I still haven't made any money yet on it. But I can see that this can be a decent side business. So. I am really thankful. being able to live here and enjoy this place. Um, not everyone has that chance. And um, I'm thankful for my health because some people can't uh, enjoy it because they're not healthy enough to enjoy it. So we're at whatever stage, whatever, whatever stage of life you're in, you just enjoy it. And remember, if you have vinyl siding, make sure you put down plywood first. Because you will inevitably hit it with a block of wood and end up um, busting a chunk out of it. So I cut about 14 cord a year. sound weird but there's nothing like the snow falling and uh, they're out there cutting wood and the chainsaw running the smell the smell of two little oil it's great I'm gonna start uh, cutting wood for this year coming this winter I'm going to combine my firewood cutting with clearing my pasture. So I'll be clearing my pasture, but I'll be cutting my firewood at the same time. You have to do that because you don't have very much time. Time is limited, especially if you work outside of the home. See, that's why I'm moving wood in the evenings, because that's when I can do it. Anything you do on the homestead, you have to try to combine it with other projects. Here's some of the things I gotta do. Cut my wood, clear the pasture. I wouldn't mind being able to mill a little bit of cedar. Maybe I can make some beehives out of it. Or my wife's been wanting a cedar hot tub, so I don't know if we can uh, try to do that. Here on my back deck, I fill up my wood uh, holder. And then I fill the rest right up to the corner. It's just at the corner over there. Um, makes it easy. I can walk right through and put it in the uh, fireplace. So it works really good. I'm gonna finish up my wood and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna relax a little bit. Um, so everyone, have a good one.